Hi and welcome to the exciting world of kite fishing brought to you by Cording Flight. My name is Stephen Morris and during the course of this instructional DVD we'll be able to show you our product range and how to set up your kites, your fishing rods, your lines and your baits to be able to get out there fishing in amongst all the big fish. Whether you're a freshwater fisherman, a saltwater fisherman, elderly or disabled, the kite lends itself and allows you to achieve amazing results at a very affordable cost. So hopefully by the end of this DVD you'll be inspired enough to be able to go revisit some of those spots that you thought were just a little bit too hard to fish at and put the kites to work. So thank you very much and I hope you enjoy the instructional DVD. Welcome to the new product range offered to you by Cording Flight. The kites have all changed in size, as in they are actually wider with a greater payload. All the rods now have fiberglass rods permanently attached and have all been reinforced around the leading edges. The bridles and the tails both have their own separate winders so that you can pack the kite away, it stays neat and stays very tidy. So there's two winders for each kite which just keeps everything nice and neat and very user friendly. New to the range at Cording Flight are the Alvi 665 side cast snapper reels. They're absolutely brilliant to use. I highly recommend them and they're very, very simple. Very few moving parts, got a beautiful drag system on them. A one to one ratio gives you 18 inches of kite line per revolution. The drag system is very quick and easy. Just click it on, it has a fish alert and I'll break this reel down very shortly for you. We've got our golden reels. Now they've got eight ball bearings, a lever drag system which is very easy to operate. Simple adjustment here, you want to adjust it, tweak it up a little bit more, throw the drag back on, slow the kite up and wind it in. The reel itself, once again, is very smooth and very easy to use. New to cording flight are our burly bags. Now the burly bag itself, very simple and very easy to use and implement when you're fishing. And keep in mind, with your burly in here, at the location of your fishing bait, you're going to attract more fish and we'll break that down a little bit later on. It's highly recommended that you use a good quality ball bearing swivel. Now these are available at your local fishing tackle stores. So pop down, pick up a packet because this will avoid any hassles that you've got with the twist in the kite line and I'll go into that later on in the DVD. I talk about running sinker clips and that's it. You buy them at a pack, once again, local retail outlet, and they'll be able to supply them. For the guys that like to go out fishing at night, for the larger fish, what we recommend is you put a couple of glow sticks on the kite, so the kite's always visible at night. It's not a case of trying to peer across the horizon or try and look through and find out where your kite is. With the glow sticks on them, you can see the kite all the way through the process. Now, we've got here our kite line winder, and what I'll do is I'll go through and assemble that and that basically takes the kite line from the hank and allows you to put it onto the fishing reel. Now, last but not least are our promotional kites. Now these kites are aimed at the kids. They're a small little pocket kite, very similar to our larger fishing kites with no fiberglass spars. There are a promotional side of it so you can advertise and I'll break that down once again later on during the video clip. We've got our two types of release clips which we'll break down once again and our baiting needles which you'll actually see later on when I'm actually knocking up a couple of pillies to go out fishing. So that's the breakdown and very shortly we'll unwrap a couple of the kites. I'll go through a lot of the benefits for the kites and we might actually just show you how easy it is to put a kite up into the air. Okay, upon unwrapping your kite and pulling it out of the bag, 
you'll notice that the fiberglass rods are inserted. The tips of all the fiberglass rods have been reinforced. The leading edges here have all been double stitched and have actually reinforcing material sewn into them. Just gives the kite greater flexibility in the air. You'll find that the same concept has happened all the way across the leading edge of the kite. Now having the black bird in the centre of the kite being our logo of course, but it wards off the ocean going birds, the gulls, from taking your bait out of as you're heading out across the water. Now the tails themselves are now all one size on the kites. They've all got mesh bags at the back of the kite, back of the tail. All the strings have been totally sewn all the way down along the kites. Now we've just got a light breeze here and I'm not going to unfold the tail but we're just going to show you how easy it is to launch a kite. Keeping in mind, and one of the pre one of the pre-checks that you do before you launch your kite is to put both leading edges together and draw the bridle line out and make sure that one side hasn't stretched further than the other. Now if you find by the time you get to the end here that there's an unbalance, that's going to actually steer your kite across the water. It could lead to a tracking for issue. This, for this part of the instructional DVD, I've left the kite line tail winder on the kite purely because I don't want it to dip into the water during this part of the instructional DVD. But as you can see, the kites are quite happy to fly straight out of the tips of your fingers. Now this makes the kite very, very user friendly for the elderly and also for the disabled that have the fear that I'm not going to be able to run up the beach to launch the kite. Now the kites themselves are designed to fly very stable but they have wind zones. If you were to put this kite up in 20 knot winds the sail area is too big and the kite wouldn't react and respond as comfortably as what this, the maxi would in a 4 or 5 knot wind. So please keep in mind that the kites come in three sizes. The three sizes are to do with wind strengths and you being able to wind the kite in very, very comfortably. If you find that you've got a kite up and you're having difficulty winding it in, it's because the sail area is too great for the, the simple job that it has to do. Keep in mind, it only has to carry the weight of your bait out. So in really light winds, in the oceans, the big kite is the way to go. For the freshwater guys that aren't carrying a huge payload, you would put the midi kite up because the midi kite is the best all-round wind performance kite that we've got and it just makes it very, very easy to be able to retrieve. If you've got winds up around about the 20 knots, 18, 15 knots, then you'd put the mini kite out. As with any sailor, if they go out and the winds are strong, they're going to run light sails or smaller sail area. On returning from a successful kite fishing trip with the kites, and by the way, this is our midi kite, simple maintenance is required. Just basically give them a quick wipe down with a sponge, a quick splash with water, give them an hour or so to dry out, fold them away, and they'll serve you for many years. Once again, the midi kite has been reinforced all the way through. Two winders, the tail's got the mesh bag. The kite itself will serve you long and hard, but you've just got to look after it. Just give it a bit of a wipe down at the end of the day because it's going to be up there working hard for you in all the extreme elements. At the end of the day, folds back up into the bag, put him away, and it's ready for you next time around. As earlier mentioned, both tail and bridle have their own separate winders. The LV snapper reel, and we thank the LVs because they've come up with a very, very clever idea that's been around for about 80 years. The new products are beautifully moulded, great presentation. They've got a beautiful drag system on it now, a one-to-one -one ratio which allows, as I said earlier, 18 inches of line per revolution. A simple side cast 
system that will allow you to use it on the boat as well. So it's not purely designed for the kites, but I tell you what, it lends itself absolutely fantastic with the kites. Winding in with any other reel, you would have to concentrate on trying to keep the kite line reasonably level so that you don't create a mountain on an overhead reel. With this guy here, just wind away, absolutely beautiful. The ratio on the one to one with the leverage factor is absolutely, probably one of the best ratios that I've had to play with. And I've only been using these now for a couple of years, but they're very, very nice to use. So that's the breakdown on the reel. Simple maintenance once again, couple of drops in the center spindle, keep it well lubricated, and the reel will serve you well. As with overhead reels, if you drop your overhead reel in the sand or you've got a level winder and it plays up, these reels don't have any of the complicated parts. Very few moving parts. If you were to drop it into the sand and it was creating a problem, okay, you will end up just dipping it into the salt water, washing the sand out, the kite's ready to go. This reel will hold the full 500 metres of kite line and that is all then at your disposal. The burly bags, we've actually put them to the test. And we had, out in the boat, we had a Dan Rigger on one side, Dan Rigger on the other side, identical baits, put one burly bag on one Dan Rigger on this side of the boat and put them out into the water just to see if there was an actual difference between hookup ratios. With the burly bag on this side, the rod didn't stop, we were continually pulling fish in. This side here didn't get a single hit. Identical baits, the only thing we can put it to is the burly bag was attracting the fish to one side. After half an hour, we put a second burly bag on this side, both rods went off and it kept us very busy for the afternoon. So the burly bags itself, we found and had a look around on the market, couldn't find any. So we thought, well, okay, we'll create them, we'll get them out, we'll market them. Now, they're very cost effective, as you will have seen on the website, but very, very easy to use. Place your burly inside the bag, pull the drawstring up, and there's a little keeper that holds the keeper. Sit down here, and you put your sinker line through here and the belly bag floats off back into the water. You've got your baited line coming off this way. So you're attracting the fish to the local area where you're fishing. And we found these to be very, very successful. For the guys fishing off the beaches or anybody casting with a belly bag, once again, it's achievable. But you don't need to put really heavy sinkers in with your belly bag because what you can do is when you apply your burly into the bag, grab a couple of handfuls of sand and put the sand in with the burly. Do the bag up and the bag itself will act as the sinker. But when your bag's out in the water, floating around in the water with the current, all the sand's falling out to the bottom and then you're physically left just with burly in your bag. Now, if you were to combine that with the fishing kite, what have we got? Once again, we've got distance and we've been able to get out past the shore breaks, over the rocks, the reefs, over the shallows, out into an area. Firstly, we've got a very nice presented bait and you'll have seen that coming up in the DVD shortly. Secondly, you're actually placing burly at the site that you're actually got your bait working in. Now, one, you've got the world's, the best presented bait you can possibly put out there. You've got burly on site. You've just about got the best of the best that you can get out on site. With our kite line being supplied in Hanks, there's 500 metres here of the twisted microfiber line. Now, I'm still using my original kite line, and that's two years. And I do quite a lot of demonstrations where the kites are up in the air, in, out, go out fishing quite often 
and the lines had more use and it's lasted longer than I personally expected it to and it's still going on. But there was a problem. The customers were having trouble getting the line from here onto the fishing reel. So one of our clever customers by the name of Richard, and we thank you very much Richard for your thoughts, designed this little kite line decanter. And what it, what it basically is, and I'll just throw it together very quickly here on the table working to the inside peg lines, and you'll see this listed on the website. But uh, it's very, very clever, well made, simplistic, and what we'll do now is we'll just stretch it out, we'll move the holes out one, one peg, so we're onto our second holes. And I'll stand this up in a minute so that you've got a better visual. <coughs> so the kite line's now gonna sit between the pegs. We're just going to get our top piece now. And what this little hat does, it basically stops the kite line from climbing out the end of the sticks. So there is the kite line. Now if you were going to mount this up permanently, you'd put a couple of screws or you'd dowel these two halving joints together and make it a permanent fixture. Now there's knots front and back on this, undo the knots and when you're pulling the kite line off, make sure that the kite line comes parallel or horizontal with the kite line winder as it's winding off. Don't try and take it off vertically because you'll end up with a big bird's nest. So once again, a very clever idea from Richard and we're quite proud to put these onto our website and promote them. So that's the kite line winder. Once again, very sim simple in its actions and well made. Hi, just a quick rundown on the red release clip. It's the simplest and lightest and very, very effective. It has one drawback is that it's line diameter sensitive. So each time you change line from let's say a mono to a braid you would then have to adjust the clip. Apart from that it has the ability to hold onto the line so you don't need any special attachments it'll just clip on anywhere along your fishing line. So you can clip it right up near your sinkers or near your baits or you can run it 30-40 feet away and skip a bait out off the water. The release clip itself only has to be strong enough to be able to carry the bait out. The clip itself is very simple to use. Clip your line on, push the little bar down, feed him in, job's done. Because they're only a cheap product and you might be switching between braided lines to mono lines, have a couple in your tackle box. Just put a little black texture mark here on the back and just give yourself a rough idea what it's set for. If you have to change the poundage or the clip, just simply tweak the line up a fraction more and you've changed the seating and as you can see now that's quite firm. So you can set that from any breaking strain line you like it has the ability to pick up at least a kilogram. a kilogram. For all the freshwater fishermen out there, these little red release clips are very handy because you can get your little fly, a live bait, a little freshwater lure. Send him out across the water. Once you're out far enough, release him into the water and then you've got one big playground to play in. The release clips themselves, once again, are just as easy. Now for the guys running out very light baits, on the end of this dropper line, which is about five to 10 feet, there is no benchmark ruling on this one. It's entirely up to yourself. Put some sort of a pendulum weight down there because the air rushing past the kite is enough to actually drag the unweighted baits and the very light baits back up into the into the kite. So we just add a little bit of weight here. This weight here is purely dependent upon yourself. You can put whatever you need down the bottom. 
all it has to do is to remain at the bottom. Now the second setting up of the kite you need is a running sinker clip. Now as you can see there it's very simple and easy to use. Okay, just a quick rundown on the black release clip. Sets up very similar to the running sinker clip where the kite line runs through the center and allows the clip itself to just spin freely. So any twist on the kite line is not generated through the release clip. The release clip itself is fully adjustable and you set it up depending on the weight of the bait that you're using. The release clip itself is only activated when the tension from a fishing line as the kite's wandering out across the water, you close the bail up, your fishing line draws tight, once there's enough force re applied on the clip, the line drops out. So it's that simple. There's no special tricks to anything here, and it's just very basic deployment. Now, we're setting up our swivel up to our kite to our bridle line. We now run back. So we're back to our blood knot here, which has been wound up on the reel. Runs all the way up through the runners until it catches up the, with the release clip. Keeping in mind now our kite is now 60 feet up into the air, and we've got this release clip sitting just off the tip of our rod. It just then takes us to clip our baited line in, into here, open up the bale on the fishing reel, back the drag off on the kite line, and out goes the kite across the water. Once you've reached your destination, close up your fishing line, the line draws tight, drops your bait off into the water. It is as simple as we can possibly keep it and very, very effective. Right, just a quick rundown on the importance of a ball bearing swivel. As you can see here, under load, the ball bearing swivel spins very well. Now this should be the first anchor point between your free air, kite line, and the attachment to your bridle. As you can see here, we've just got a little El Cheapo one. With twisting under load, it's not really happening. Okay, now if you were to employ one of these cheap swivels as a contact point between yourself and the kite, then you've got yourself a lot of trouble. Because the twist in the kite line is not going to be absorbed by the swivel. So therefore, as soon as you try and release the bait, you get a bit of slack line onto your kite. The actual bridle or the V line running to the two lots of kites is going to actually twist up and the kite will fail. Spend a little bit extra money, buy good quality ball bearing swivels. Make sure that the swivel itself actually physically locks in place. Once again, if you start running with the cheap swivels, you'll end up getting yourself into all sorts of trouble. During this tape, I mentioned that we use the term a blood knot. Now let's see if we can just put it together here and just make it a little bit workable. So we fold it over once. We fold it over twice. Three times. four times. So what we're now actually seeing is that the line starting to twist up this side and the line twisting up this side. Very easy to do. Now take this part of the loop here and we now insert it okay, through this loop. So it's going to look like this. Keeping this loop here very, very short because this is the part here that's going to stick out from the knot. So what I'll do is just grab one of our small little bait needles. But you could use a pin, a safety pin will do the same job. Okay. So now we're just going to pull the two knots together. No, it's not, being, not playing the visual game very well, but we'll see how we go. Oh, we'll just do it. And of 
course it's much easier to do with nylon with your fishing line but there's your little blood knot absolutely spot on so this could be a safety pin it could be a small pin but make sure you pull it reasonably tight firm the last job is pull your pin out now you have a blood knot now this is the blood knot I use which is a stopper for the release clip especially for the red one and also for the black one and as you can see it makes a nice firm little knot so that's our blood knot very simple to do now where would that blood knot go you'd launch your kite get your kite up into the air and make sure that the kite is flying very stable and somewhere at that point that you're happy with, now that could be 60 feet, that could be 100 feet, that could be 150 feet up in the air, depending on your location. Now, keeping in mind you've got 1,500 feet of kite line to play with, and if you lose 150 feet by having to put a blood knot in there, then you're not really losing much out of the big picture, keeps your kite flying safe, up in clean air and it'll want to stay there all day and fly quite comfortably for you. So that's a simple breakdown now of the blood knot and what I'll do is I'll change lines, I'll go through it about two or three times as slow as I can and when you practice this a couple of times you'll go, ah oh, this is very Here's easy. The second go at tying up the blood knot. So if we get the line here and we make it sit nice and flat. Take this half of the line over the top, underneath, over the top, and we do this several times till we end up with a line that looks like that. We take this part of the line here and we poke it through the hole so that now comes out the top here. Once again, a safety pin really doesn't matter what you use. And hopefully if it all flows together nicely, we'll be able to see the whole lot come together. And we'll just fiddle and change and twist it around a little bit. You can grab hold of this line with your teeth if you want to. So there's the knot as it's coming up. Now that's the loop that we've put through here. You can see it just poking out the top here. Now if you leave that loop long, you'll be able to, on your fishing line, be able to attach your hooks or your leaders to it. But that's the knot. Tweak it up nice and firm, pull a little pin out, and there you have your knot once again. Now, once again, I highly recommend that you get the kite up into the air first, find out where the clean air is, establish it, then once you're happy with that location and the kite's flying very stable, then tie the knot in the kite line which will just mean that you gather some line down with the kite flying up in the air here you'll gather your line down once again quickly flip him around and we'll do this one at a little bit quicker pace flip him through poke your line through the hole put your bait through there your bait mate needle will be something that's really handy to use so there it is, done at a little bit quicker pace. And as you can see, we've got a little bit higher loop. So that still allows your kite line to twist with your black release clip sitting here or your running sinker clip allows the kite line to spin around and not foul on here. If you were setting this up for your fishing line, you'd create, once again, the same scenario and we'll roll him around and as I said we'll just go about it a little bit quicker okay poke your line through but give yourself a bigger loop 
pull him up like so. Now you can put your steel trace on here, your leader for your fishing line, and once again, it's a very useful and reliable knot that you can be used in just about all applications. Cording Flight is proud to announce the release of the new bait mates. This allows the highest standard of bait presentation to be obtained. The bait mates are clever in design and easy to use as you can see. Simply grab hold of a pilchard, work the bait mate down through the centre of the pilchard and poke the bait mate needle out through the tail. At this point here you can attach a leader, a steel trace, in fact any type of fishing line that you like onto the hook of the needle simply fold the little safety bar over the top so you don't gut the fish on the way back out and slide the needle back through the fish pulling the line with you how simple is that the baits can now be presented in their most natural way this leads to more hookups from fussy fish when used in conjunction with a fishing kite the bait presentation is of the highest standard as there's no casting involved. There's no g-forces when launching the bait out or when it's re-entering the water. Simply work the leader back through the fish. We go down the other end and hide the hook in the tail. Now once again bait presentation is a must. By hiding the steel work inside the fish and no external steel work the fish itself lays straight and very natural. We insert a nose hook or a hook in the snout and this leader line is shorter than the main trace line. This allows you to tow the fish along naturally and the fish remains straight in the water at all times. The best of the best from caught in flight. In front of us here is just another example of using a bait mate and we're baiting up a tiny little bottle squid. One of the key advantages with the bait mates is pre-preparation as in I'm heading out fishing the following morning and it gives me the opportunity at my leisure to be able to bait up all my baits, put them back in the fridge, freeze them up and I know that everything is all ready to go. As soon as I get down to the water, all I've got to do is clip the leader on, get the bait out over the water and get it working. Bait presentation can then be of the highest standards. Hook the little tail clip in and now as the little bottle squid's being towed through the water, he's not looking disjointed, dismembered, you can keep him as natural as you can possibly keep it in the water and be incredibly effective in catching fish. Alright, just a quick rundown on the kite line. The kite line is a twisted three ply spectra. As you can see there, it's slowly unravelling. Okay, so we've got a reasonably good shot at that. But the best way to treat this line is that even though I've cut it off here and it's all looking like a reasonably clean cut, let's just get a lighter and just melt the end of the line. What that stops the line doing is one strand being stretched more than the other and it just keeps it very uniform. You can trim the tip of that off there, that's, that's not a problem at all. But uh, that's that's one little that's one little tip that we've picked up along the way. Launching a cording flight fishing kite is very simple. Simply allow the wind to carry the kite up into the air off the tip of your rod, back the drag off on the kite reel, and the kite will wander out over the waters and sit there quite happily all day, waiting for you to attach your fishing line to the release clip. Now we've spoken earlier about putting a blood knot 60 feet and winding it up onto the fishing reel which is exactly what I've done. Now as the kite line's heading out we're going to catch up with the blood knot. Now the blood knot which is just in place now 
has caught hold of the two release clips that we've got on there. We've put two release clips on there just for this instructional DVD. You can choose one or the other or have them both on. That choice is yours. As mentioned, we've got about 60 foot of line coming down to the two release clips. Now we've got our two release clips here. We've got our black one, which is more the heavy duty type of release clip. I can hang on to it. It's all fully adjustable. Clip your fishing line in. As soon as you close your bail up or your fishing line draws tight, the release clip will open and deploy your bait into the water. The second one we've got, we run off a running sinker clip. So that way if there's any twist in the line on the way out, the pendulum force keeps it at the bottom. With this red release clip, I run about five, eight foot of line running down to our red release clip, which is once again fully adjustable, but line diameter sensitive. So that you have to adjust it with the screwdriver to suit the line that you're going to put in there. If you set it up too tight, you won't be able to release your line when you get it out there. The clip itself only has to be strong enough to support the bait on the way out. Okay, with the kite, you don't actually bring the kite all the way in and land it. Leave the kite up 100 feet, 150 feet, so it's quite happily flying up in the air until you're ready to reuse it again. A lot of people have the idea that each time you have to relaunch the kite, relaunch the kite, you don't. Let the kite sit up out the road and that allows you to go and get in your fishing. So the kite's done its job, it's now up in the air. I've completely spilled this one but we'll set him back up again. Okay, so that's set up now. And that's as hard as it gets. Kite fishing from a lady's perspective is just as easy. As you can see there, Eric has attached a bait and she's got an unweighted bait there. She's opening up the bale. She's going to walk across now, back the drag off on the kite rod and allow the kite to wander out across the water. Now with careful control of the drag on the kite reel, you can keep your baits airborne. Having the baits airborne allows you to get over all the shore breaks, any of the rocks, reefs, any of the areas that could damage the bait on the way out. And keep in mind, bait presentation with the fishing kite is an absolute must. You've got the best presented bait you can possibly have out on the water. Once the bait's released, Eric is now going to work the baits back, looking for the schoolfish. Now when she locates a schoolfish, she knows that she doesn't have to go at the full 1500 feet, she might only have to go at six or seven hundred and just keep reworking that same school of fish until they move on. And that's absolutely brilliant. Skipping a bait out across the water is a new and exciting way of deploying your bait. You actually get a double hit at it because you're at, you've got your baits working on the way out as well as on the way back in. Simple procedure is to let the kite free spool and take as much line off your kite reel as you possibly can. At the point of deployment of the bait and you'll see the rod load up here and have a bit of a bounce. When it does, simply put the brakes back onto the kite reel. The kite will climb up out the road. There's the bait release. The brake goes onto the kite. The kite will climb up out the road and you're out there fishing in spots that you've never been able to get to. As if you were going to cast normally. We get hold of our kite, which is aloft, and start sending the line out. The bait's going to take off in about two seconds. Now I've we'll put about 40 feet of line on that. Out goes the bait skipping across the water. Close your bail up. 
bait pulls tight, bait falls off into the water. Bait out now, we've got four ounces of lead on it, and out she goes. We're in reasonably light winds, we won't wander out too far because the camera won't be able to pick it up. But we're just about ready now to close the bale on the fishing line. The fishing line draws tight and off goes the bait into the water. And I'm sorry to say that's as hard as it gets. Just a quick little demonstration on skipping a bait out. We're standing on a pier and we've got a channel about 50 feet away from us. So we're going to skip this bait across the channel and as you see we get nailed on the way out so it's a very productive form of fishing and the bait itself can be teased along the top of the water and there you go, bait's gone <laughs> how easy is that? we're out in Port Phillip Bay, we've got about two knots of wind if we're lucky as you can see by the water it's very flat we've already launched the kite we've got about a 20 foot leader down to the release clip and about 10 foot of line on the release clip I'm now just going to clip the bait on and we'll get the kite out and working. As with the release clip, it's all fully adjustable. So you just set the line up so that the line just snaps out nicely. Set it up too tight, the bait won't release. So it's only strong enough to hold the bait. So we're now ready to go bait on the stern. I've backed the drag off on the reel so it will take line out beautifully. I go up here now to the reel I back the line off. As I back the line off, off goes the fish. There we go. Keep in mind we've only got about two knot winds so the kite's flying in just about next to no wind at all. Now we work the kite out, not so that it wants to fly above our heads, but just so it works the bait out across the top of the water. As you can see the kite's quite happily flying out there and dropping the bait out. Now we're probably at about 100 metres off the back of the boat now. We have a range of 500 metres. But for this demonstration I don't think it's required. So we're out far enough now. All I'm going to do now is close up. The boat falls off. We're in out in the water fishing. You've now got a glimpse of the maxi kite in flight. This is our aerial master of light winds. Due to its larger surface area now and bigger payloads, the kite is far more user friendly and as you can see by the moon in the background, it is very, very stable in the air. The airs here are very light, but as you can see, the kite is quite comfortably flying. The MIDI kite is our medium wind range kite. Quite happy to fly in the medium winds and it's very user friendly for the fresh and the salt water fishermen alike. The Mini Kite is our high wind kite. It has the easiest retrieval rate of all the kites when the winds and the conditions are tough going. Hi, my name is Erica and I'd like to introduce you to the promotional kites that Caught in Flight has to offer. What a fantastic way to be able to advertise your school, your organisation, your sporting club on a kite that can be either given away or sold as a fundraiser. Caught in Flight has put together this fantastic little promotional cordy flight that comes in a keyring carry pouch. It has a handle with a string, so all in all a complete kite that folds up together in a keyring carry pouch advertising your organisation, your school. A retail outlet might like to put their logo on it and sell the kites promoting their business. A sporting club can advertise their club and their organisation on a kite and sell it as a fundraiser. There are many avenues that you could utilise the promotional kites with. Your choice of what logo you want on the kite, we can help you and assist you in putting your logo together. Your logo not only goes onto the kite but also onto the keyring carry pouch. 
so your business can be advertised when the kite is in flight. You can choose your own colours of the kite. You can choose three colours, that's totally up to you. And we are more than happy to assist you in every way possible. The kites are extremely well made. They've all been seamed and hemmed. There are no spars in the kites at all, so there's no, there, there can be no damage or no harmful material on the kites for the children. They're very stable in flight and just fly straight out of your hand. We at Calling Flight are very proud to be offering you these promotional kites. As you can see, we have the three colours here. We have the red, we have our logo on there, and on the back we have the white air rams. So again, it's totally your choice as to how you would like to advertise and what colours you would like to put on your kites. They're easily folded away, so they can be stored away just in the kids' school bags or just in the car, so when you're out on the weekends you can actually go out and fly the kite. Whether you wish to have this kind of kite, or whether you would like a larger kite or a different type of kite, we at Cording Flight can organise that for you. We can be contacted at promotions at Cording Flight and just leave us your details. Let us know that you're interested in discussing the promotional kites with us and we'll get back to you and send you as much information as we can. As you can see, they fold back easily. The handles just slip back in there. And what a fantastic way to be able to make money and to advertise your business. So they fold back in and there's your little keyring carry pouch that you can put away in your bag and have it ready to go out and fly the kites. This draws to the end of the instructional DVD. I've only just scratched the surface but hopefully it's been enough to inspire you to be able to go and revisit some of those fishing spots that you thought were just a little bit too hard, too rocky or too shallow but you knew the fish were out there you just had to find a way to get out there. Please send us some pictures of your catches and some stories of your kite fishing adventures because we'd love to put them on the website and readers from all around the world would love to read them as well. Thank you very much and look forward to your comments and your feedbacks through the website and good luck out there fishing. Thank you.